Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Today I have a very important message. Those of you who follow this channel know that recently we've been considering things from the scripture about the spirit of Jezebel. And verily, we are living in various, very serious times. And we want to watch and be sober. We want to recognize that time is wrapping up and there's not time for silliness and foolishness anymore. And we want to, to repent and turn back to Jesus Christ and remember our first love. I want to begin today in the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. So what is meant by being sober? What do we want to do to be sober? This is something that um, just was unfolded before me today was when I was in the Word. And I want to share it with all of my sisters in Jesus Christ, what it means to be sober. Let's go to Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 18, and verse, let's start in verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. In verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. This great whore of Babylon is the, the ecumenical one world globalist Luciferian church and she has many daughters and all of the denominations are partakers with her and drunkenness so if we, we want to be sober we want to not be drunk and I want to emphasize here in verse 3 for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So spiritual fornication is when people mix God's word with pagan doctrines. So it's a mixture. So we're not talking about the kind of fornication that occurs when people have sex outside of marriage, although that is a picture of this kind of spiritual fornication. Fornication in the spiritual realm is when there's a mixture of religion and, and it's the, the ancient religions that originated before the flood when people worshipped the fallen angels and had all kinds of high technology and uh, the, the fallen angels were mingling their seed with women. And this was also a kind of fornication. But in terms of religion, what people worshipped was a perversion, a twisting of the truth. So when we don't want to be drunken with the wine of the wrath of her fornication, of the whore of Babylon's fornication, we want to make sure that our doctrine is pure and comes from the word of God and the word of God only. So I want to return now to 1 Peter chapter 4 
And I want to read now in verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. When we speak as the oracles of God, it means that we hold to the scripture and the Holy Scripture, the Holy Word of God, is indeed the King James Version of the Holy Bible if you speak English. If you have questions about that, please email me and I'd be happy to address that in greater detail with you. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about sobriety versus drunkenness. So we want to be sober in verse, um, let's read now in, in First Peter chapter 4 and verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. So the mixture of idolatry into Christianity is something that, that we can witness historically, perhaps most easily, when we reference what happened when pagan Rome assimilated the Christian names and the Christian some of the Christian practices into her pagan church. So this is idolatry, and when idolatry mixes with God's word or with God, with God so we're, you know, in the Whore of Babylon, they ascribe a name that belongs to G the name Jesus Christ. They ascribe that name to a, a pagan deity known as, in, in Rome, it was Dionysius, but it's basically the reincarnated sun god. In the Bible, it's referred to as Tammuz. This pagan worship is indeed the wine of the fornication, in particular, the grand fornication of the whore of Babylon. It's the mixture of pagan idolatry with Christianity. But it's not always manifested that way. It usually is, but not always. Sometimes it's manifested in people uh, celebrating various festivals that belong to paganism, such as what they refer to as Christmas or what they refer to as Easter, which are, are indeed festivals that came from the worship of the Roman gods, and they were mixed with Christianity. So we want to be sober. We don't want to be drunk on these doctrines. And I want to discuss this just a little bit more deeply. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7, and let's begin here in verse 4. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. We want to get our wisdom and our understanding from the Word of God. And these days it's very popular to mix things like psychology or practices from Luciferianism or from Hinduism or Buddhism, various practices like yoga, like, like um, using uh, dream cards or angel cards or the worshiping of angels or channeling something. The, the practices of having rock concerts where people think they're worshiping God by having basically a rock concert. All of these things are things that Christians would see are unwise because they have nothing to do with what is contained in the Holy Scripture. So when we love the Lord, we hold to the Scripture. And if we speak, we speak from the Scripture. And the way to be able to do that is to dwell in the Scripture. So if you're reading the Word, that is the living water that will pour forth from you. 
when you speak. If you don't do that, that will not be what pours forth from you. And if you're sleeping around, in other words, you're going to various places on the internet or uh, practices of psychology from your past, or you're trying to mingle things that you learned in the false church, now that you've become a Christian, this is spiritual fornication. And it's a very serious issue. We don't want to do it. So let's read on here in verse 5. That they may keep thee, so wisdom and understanding will keep you from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. You see, the ecumenical globalist religion is very flattering. It says things like, oh, God's okay with you if you're a, a sodomite, or he's okay with you if you're in your second marriage and, and you've you know, you just decided you didn't like your first husband, so so now you want to live in adultery. That's okay. We'll twist the word of God. We'll use Greek and Hebrew to make excuse for that. So the strange woman, the whore of Babylon, or one of her Protestant whoring daughters, will flatter you and tell you things that that seem right, because it's the twisting of the scripture. It's the use of theology to flatter you. But if you have wisdom and understanding that comes from God's word, that will keep you from the strange woman and the stranger which flattereth with her words. Now let's read in verse 14. Proverbs chapter 7. Well, let's start in verse 13. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day I have paid my vows. So this flattering, strange, whoring woman, this false church, brings you a message of peace. She brings you a message of comfort. And verily, the word of God is not all about patting you on the head and telling you that God's okay with you no matter what you do. As a matter of fact, those kinds of ideas come from the false church, the Luciferian church, the globalist one world religion that is anti-Christ. And that, well, ultimately, Jesus Christ will des destroy, how? With the double-edged sword that proceeds out of his mouth, the word of God. Now let's read in verse 19. She says, this whoring sister says, this not sister, pardon me, this whoring woman says to those she seeks to lure into death, she says, for the good man is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. Well, the good man for Christians is Jesus Christ. So a lot of people want, you know, they want to be told that their sin is okay and um, whatever it is that they're doing is okay with God. If you want to go to a church meeting with your hair all done up and wearing pants and men's clothing and stand up and take authority over the church as a woman, that if you want to do that, that's okay with God. He doesn't care what you wear. Why would God, who has perfect love, care? what you wear. This is what the, the whoring church says because she thinks, you know, judgment, you know, Jesus hasn't come and he's not going to, you know, he's not going to judge us. So the good man is not at home. Let's uh, read on. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He, go, he goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, 
O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Not, go not astray in her paths. So we don't want to be led down the garden path by this false church and her flattering words. And there's a reason why. Let's read verse 26. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. What is her house? Those are those buildings. In the United States, it's the ones with the 501c3 tax credit. So they've committed fornication with the government, and the government says, we'll give you, uh, we'll make it so you don't have to pay taxes as long as you don't speak the truth. You see? So these are whoring churches. And anyone who's got a building going on where, where they're paying rent and they have to keep the lights on and so forth, they become corrupted because they want to maintain the building. And the church of Jesus Christ is not a building. We are living stones. And I have another video about that. If you want to see it, put a comment in the comment section and I'll, I'll put the link there for you. But the church, the churches are not the church. Now let's go to Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. And let's read now in verse 17. Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. They shall withal be fitted in thy lips. So again, if we want to speak as the oracle of God, if that's the way we want to be, then we have to, we have to uh, keep the word of God within us. And there's only one way to do that. That's to read it every day. And apply thine heart unto knowledge that thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have I not written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee? Rob not the poor, because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate. You see, the poor of this world are these who don't know the gospel. They don't know the truth of scripture. If we're holding to the word of God, that's what comes forth from our mouth. And then we're not robbing the poor. Let's go now to James chapter 1. James chapter 1 and verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Is this talking about taking care of of women who are widows or children who are fatherless? Perhaps. But I would say to you that there's a deeper meaning, that the widows, the widows are people who have come out or are in the false church and they see that that religion is dead. They are widows. And the fatherless are the heathen, the atheists, the ones who have never even encountered the word of God. So pure religion, pure religion, if you want religion, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So we bring the truth of God's word, the gospel of Jesus Christ to people. 
and we don't partake of their false doctrines. We keep ourselves unspotted. This is how to be sober and not be drunken. Now I want to go to Proverbs chapter 23. Pardon me, my sisters, I have a list of scriptures here, and so I just am allowing the Lord to lead me through them because he's the one who showed them to me today. Proverbs 23, verse 26. My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. So when we give our heart to Jesus Christ, then we we consider we consider what he did so we observe his ways and there's only one place to find that and that's in god's word for a whore this is verse 27 for a whore is a deep ditch and a strange woman is a narrow pit she also lieth in wait as for a prey and increaseth the transgressors among men. The whore, the false church, and the fa her false doctrines lie in wait for people who are young in the Lord. And the way to avoid her pit is to stay in the word of God. And if someone says something to you and it doesn't hold up with scripture, then don't follow it. People who truly love Jesus Christ speak as the orals, oracles of God. They hold to the scripture and they don't use Greek and Hebrew to change it. They read it as it's written and it's so very simple and clear. Let's read on. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? who hath redness of the eyes. They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. The fornication of the whore of Babylon is the mixed wine. It's the cup of spiritual fornication. And in these days, it's so important to not follow a flattering tongue, to not listen to th smooth things, things that seem good, to, to look around to get different opinions. If it doesn't hold up to the scripture, it's a lie. And if you follow it, you will fall into a deep pit. Let's read on about the, the mixed wine. Verse 31, look not thou, Look not, don't even look at it. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. You see, this false church is very attractive. The doctrine is very attractive. It's flattering. It's pleasing to the mind. It makes us feel okay as we're headed to the lake of fire. Verse 32, at the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. You see, when we behold the strange women, when we lie with them, when we spend time with them, when we follow them, then we speak perverse things. You see, God's people, again, they hold to the scripture. They don't fabricate something that, that flatters you, that entices you with words of fair speeches that, that say, oh, your adultery is okay. It's okay. Let's go to the Greek and Hebrew because God's word is corrupt. That's what they say to you. And they're tricking you and they're, they're using theology to bring you down to hell. Let's read on. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, 
thou shalt say. Pardon me, thou, they have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will see it yet again. When you're drunken, you're not sober. And if you have come out of the false church, as Jesus Christ commands, then it takes a while to sober up. And the way to sober up is to hold to God's word, to, to remember that he has provided for us his truth. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And those of you who are born of God's word, who have been recently baptized in Jesus' name, you've had your sins remitted, you're either waiting for the Holy Ghost or you've received it, that those of you who are in that state don't follow the strange woman. Don't return to the false doctrines that, that you abided in for so many years. Let them go. Let them go. Humble yourself and, and look into the scripture and spend time getting to know what the word of God says. Now let's go to Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 14 and verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. What this is talking about is when God sends his judgment, he's going to consider you, your heart, the things you've said, the things you've done. And a lot of us, when we're new Christians, get ahead of ourselves and we suddenly think that we can be uh, a guide to others because we spent a lot of time in the false religion and we want to save our family we might want to save our husband we might want to save all our old friends who are still in the false church but we need to remember that each one of us is judged on our own heart and what we do and if we're not dwelling in the word of God ourselves, then how are we going to help anyone? So again, though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. I want to go now to the book of Jude, and let's read... Um, starting in verse 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cory. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees who, whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these. So these are people who feast with us. It's people who are, they've run greedily after the error of Balaam. So Balaam was the mixture of, of doctrine that came when the Israelites married strange women. When they married strange women, they, they were commanded not to marry. And the gainsaying of Korah is, Korah is the, the use of theology, arguing resting the scriptures, the use of Greek and Hebrew, these things, the people who do this, who are among God's people, that now we're entering a season where the angels of Jesus Christ are separating them out. And the way that we can make sure that we're not going to be cast away as, as 
trees whose fruit withereth. Without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. You see, if you're rooted in the false religion and you've come to know the truth, you were dead and now you've been saved. Don't be dead again. Don't be dead again. Let those lies go. And like a little child, receive the kingdom of God. And Enoch also, this is verse 14, the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Flattering words. I want to close now. Let's go to Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 3, and let's begin in verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyesalve that thou mayest see. Eyesalve, eyesalve. The word of God brings life to you. It will cleanse you. It will wash you of all of that filth. In verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear to hear, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. A lot of people these days don't want to be chastened. They don't want to be rebuked. They think that we're supposed to be happy all the time, and that if someone re rebukes them from the word of God, that they're being unloving and unkind. And verily, nothing could be further from the truth. I pray that all of us recognize the strange woman, that we recognize that she flatters us. She tells us pretty lies in order to entice us into a deep pit. And we turn from her and we wash ourselves. We wash ourselves by dwelling in the word with Jesus Christ, allowing the water to wash over us and cleanse us of all things. You know, it's good to be baptized in Jesus' name. It's good to be filled with the Holy Ghost. But if you're not walking with Jesus Christ, you're not his disciples. Jesus said, he that continueth in my word, he is my disciple indeed. Verily, the time is short. And the season is changing. And Jesus Christ is coming for a holy bride. And we don't want to be uh, covered with spots and blemishes from the false church when he arrives. I pray this message has edified you today. Feel free to email me if you have questions or something I can help you with. I'm always here to help people obey the gospel if you have not yet done so. So if you're not sure about that, uh, if you've only believed, you're not saved, basically. So if you're curious about how to be saved, how to become a Christian, 
That is found in Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39, to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your fathers, and to, and to your children, pardon me, and to your children, and to all that are, are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. If you haven't yet done this, you need to that people who have not done this are not yet Christians, and therefore they're not saved. If you haven't done that, please email me. I'd be delighted to help you. But if you have done that, let's, let's recognize that it's time now to get our own heart right. And yes, we want to preach the gospel to people, but we don't want to speak things that are corruptions from the false church, because verily, each and every one of us will be judged according to our words. Let's take heed. They, he stands at the door. He's knocking. And anyone who overcomes will enter his kingdom. And my prayer is that as many people as possible come to the knowledge of the truth and obey the gospel and follow Jesus Christ all the way to eternal life in his glorious kingdom. Amen.